Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And here are my top 10 must do's when you do a fresh install of Ubuntu 22.04. So let's get started. Now it doesn't include any software, it's just more of tweaking and getting some settings done. So it makes it a little bit more usable than the default installation of Ubuntu. So let's begin. All right, so we are in a fresh install of Ubuntu. And the first thing we're gonna do, as you can see, this is still just popped up saying like there's releases out. I didn't update anything. This is like brand new fresh install. But yes, the first thing I would actually do is go into Firefox. And as you can see, it takes a while to boot up. That's because it's using a snap package. We will take care of because I will get rid of that. But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the most useful utilities that I've been using a lot of is something called Nyla. So N-A-L-A. Uh, apt. This will replace your app get and it's probably one of the most powerful replacements that I could find. Uh, let me go into uh, right here, Nyla and their GitHub. They actually have um, installation and go over to their wiki page because depending on what operating system you're using, it has a different uh, type of uh, install. So I'm going to grab the top, copy that and then paste it in here. I'm also gonna grab the second one. It, this one is tedious. Technically, you could just make a script for it. I don't know why they don't have a script for it yet. And then um, for this one, I am gonna, I should be good, sudo app update. You're gonna love it once you start using Nyla. I mean, this will this replaces apt. Probably be able to make a video on this because there's so many things you could do with it. sudo app install Nyla, all right. I'm going to grab that real quick and then I'm going to use that to update everything else. But one of the biggest features about Nyla is multi-threading downloading. So I could actually download from multiple sources to keep the bandwidth as high as possible when I'm downloading packages and also helps keep and maintain packages where I'll erase stuff that it doesn't need. It's a lot of stuff that it's bundled into one that tells you it's a really cool interface. So anyway, now that I got Nyla installed, and I'm just waiting for the prompt to kick back open. The next thing we should be doing, or the second thing we should be doing, or technically this could be the first, uh, is install your drivers. So I am using NVIDIA 1070 right here, and I should be installing the NVIDIA uh, 515 drivers. So I'm also gonna do that as well. So let's do that. I'm trying to avoid reboots because this video is gonna have a lot of reboots if I keep installing stuff that requires it. So. I'm gonna install the NVIDIA graphic drivers and then reboot it and then update the rest of the stuff. Or I could have done it the other way. Then after the whole driver install, then we'll start getting into the fun part. All right, here we go. Uh, because I am using a capture card that always defaults to 720, I am gonna change that as well to 1080, apply, and there we back. We are back at what we were supposed to be. All right, next we are gonna update the operating system. So sudo Nyla, first thing you wanna do is fetch. This might take a few minutes, but you only have to do this once. What fetching does, it's, it's gonna find all the mirrors, find the lowest ping for each mirror, and then you could tell it which one to use. I would usually choose up to three or four uh, different mirrors, just so I could download as fast as possible. Okay, so here you can see the pings, four, four, seven, eight. I'm gonna choose one, two, and three. So I have three different mirrors. Yes, now sudo Nyla update, and it's actually gonna pull from all three of those mirrors. And you can see it's pulling from US NY2 and all this other stuff just to grab all the databases from there. Now, once you're done with this, you could go ahead and do the upgrade. Okay, so sudo Nyla upgrade. Here we go, all the packages that's gonna be updated. I'm gonna hit yes. It's actually gonna use a download size of 109 megabytes, total disk required because it's gonna uninstall a few stuff and you're really just using 1.4 megabytes worth of space after this. But you can see it's actually downloading super fast. Being able to do multi-connection uh, download or multi-threading download just gets the files super quick. So Nyla is actually a huge improvement in this part just just in the downloading part. Obviously this part is just all processing, so it depends on how fast your computer is, is how fast you could install all those packages. 
All right, so here we are. We are done with the Nyla install, but what I really like about it at the end is that the following packages require a reboot. So it actually tell you that, hey, these things need to be rebooted, so we should do that. Technically, we should always reboot because they installed the kernel, so you know that's gonna be changed as well. So I'm gonna jump in and do this reboot real quick, and then we'll start installing all the other packages that we should do on a fresh Ubuntu install. So. One of the things I like to do is remove, you see how long it takes to boot up Firefox? Just because it's a snap, it's still loading right now. But one of the first things I would like to do is actually completely remove Firefox from snap packages because there's a lot of plugins you actually cannot use because it's in snap. Um, I, I just run into so many of these problems. So the first thing I do is remove it. Now there is a website that I will leave a link down in the description below that will give you the steps. I might actually make a git for this, um, just for this process. So. If you see it in the description, I probably have a gift for this, uh, all these instructions that I'm following. But remember on my Docker install, I told you guys to install this, which is notes taking app or stuff. I use this a lot of the times for this. Now this is the website for how to remove Firefox and use um, deb instead. So I'm just gonna copy all these commands right now. Actually, what would be smart is you copy this paste it in a text because Firefox needs to be closed because you're removing it. And what I would do now is sudo snap remove Firefox, which takes, I don't know why it takes so long. In general, that, this, just removing some files takes a few minutes, even more. Like it shouldn't take this long just to remove something from snap. Not a... I use Snap, but I'm not a super, super huge fan. If I had a choice, I would use Flatpak, and that's another thing we need to install. All right, so finally, that got removed, so we're gonna add this repository in here. Now, these two lines, this one basically tells, okay, if you're gonna install Firefox, make sure you're installing it from apt, and the bottom one actually tells it to update uh, unintended upgrades for Firefox, because it doesn't have that if, since you were using Snap, so you have to add that back in, and it'll just do, you know, anytime there's a Firefox update, it will update it for you. So I'm just gonna paste that command, paste the other command, and then now I'm gonna sudo nyla install Firefox. And look, it's gonna add 235, hit yes. Now because it's only using one Mira, you see how it's like not that fast compared to when we were updating the system? But yeah, there we go. Now we have Firefox installed and watch this. Uh, let me add this to favorites. And here we go. Super quick. It instantly loads. I don't know why Snap takes, I know why Snap takes forever because it's gotta load the disk and all that stuff, but it's not needed. Anyway, now that we have Firefox installed, uh, we could do everything else that we need. So I'm gonna have the terminal hold up. And one of the things we want to do is install all uh, the new GNOME extensions. So sudo nano, no, not nano, Nyla install gnome shell extension manager. I actually really like this extension manager because it allows you to actually download the plugins without having to go to a website. So with this extension manager in place, close, you could see the extensions that you already have running but I can go to browse and search for the ones that I wanna use. So user themes, that's one. Just so you could actually theme the entire thing and change the outlook of it. I'm not gonna be using it, but I would pre-install that. Uh, next thing I would install, which is number two now, is Caffeine. So Caffeine is a plugin that keeps your monitor from going to sleep. So if I run this on the top right, it will just you know disable the screen taper. Then I would actually use Blur, Actually, I'll, yeah, I could do that. Blur my shell. Blur my shell. Install that. Okay, this will actually give me a blur and it makes this look so much prettier. Okay, then you would add CPU frequency. This one right here. Install. So we're out, well, we're out to like five four different plugins. There's more you could do with this, like Top Hat would actually tell you all the processes. Okay, it would ask me for permission to install something. If you've seen any of my other videos, I always use this 
plug in because I can control my CPU a little bit better, especially on the Raspberry Pi. You want to probably remove IRQ balance detected as well. So sudo nyla remove IRQ balance. Is there a dash? No, there is no dash. Uh, on the newer CPUs, it will actually boost the first and second core to be like really high compared to the old all the other ones. If you have IRQ balance, it basically tries to use all the cores at all the time, so you will never get that boost. So removing that on the newer CPUs will actually benefit from it. That's why I would actually remove that. Next thing I would do is actually head over to my github.com, to my Novaspare GitHub. And I have a repository which I just recently updated, not for any particular reason, but to upload a wallpaper that I really like. And it's this one right here. I'm just gonna download that and set as wallpaper. Again, it's on my GitHub, so you could download this wallpaper. It's actually really cool. Now, because I have this wallpaper all blue instead of purple, um, I would go into settings and then go into appearance and get the teal and it'll change all the icons and everything to the teal. This way I don't have to change the full theme just to match my wallpaper actually makes it look really nice. And that is another one. Now, because I got all, all that set up, I'm also gonna change my terminal. So I'm gonna go into preferences, unnamed color, do not use the system theme, changes to tango dark. And then I will add a little bit of transparency to it just to make it look cool, you know? So now I got the transparency in the background, but it also looks really nice and it matches with everything else. And now we are pretty much all set with how my desktop would look like and also the drivers installed and a couple of plugins that I would normally use. Now, there are a few that I don't have here that I always have installed on my other machines, which is uh, WireGuard because I connect to a lot of WireGuard machines. So here you have WireGuard. I will install that as well. And again, I was talking about this other one, Top Hat, which is very, very new, but it also gives you like a really cool system theme, but it does take up a lot of the footprint over here up on top. So it really depends. Now there's an error with this because you actually have to install, I forgot what it's called. It's actually on there. If you go into their discussion, there you go, right here. Girl 1-2 G Top, you have to actually install that and all the plugins would load and it'll actually look like this. I only installed this sometimes. Uh, I played around with it. I do like the look of it, but I don't check my system stats enough to really require it. So a lot of people who are, you know, who use this a lot, like especially on a laptop, actually. On my laptop, I check it sometimes to see where it's pulling battery. That's the only time I really use Top Hat. Other than that, my desktop, I don't even install these. So. That is it. Those are my top 10, maybe 11 things I would do when I do a fresh install of Ubuntu. So if you guys have any questions about this or if you'd like to see my top 10 applications, not just like plugins or getting my desktop set up, but applications that I would install almost instantly when I have uh, Ubuntu installed, let me know down in the comments below because I can make that video because I have a lot of programs that might not necessarily hit the mark for everyone, but I could show you that video as well. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.